I'm not sure if everything in Ukraine is the way it should be because a lot of news that I see here is what I was explaining. It's going to be a procedure. It's going to be like this. It's going to be like that. And uh, the whole thing to me is a bit uh, based on the MK Ultra program, which I through which I witness all the sides involved in the war giving their feedback. This is very, very, very conflicting. Okay, I'm sure this is a fantastic news, if true, uh, on how the Russian air defenses are being destroyed, as Mr. Zelensky is. Сьогодні мав честь відвідати та привітати наших воїнів, воїнів артилерії. This is fantastic. This is really great. I mean, if you want to advance, you do need Russian air defense system down. Beautiful stuff. However, there is very, very conflicting stuff that's coming out of Ukraine, like lack of ammunition. Uh, that probably should never happen. Lack of ammunition is Price like, is who we're going to go with. This is about as bad as you can get. It's, it's about as bad as you can get. Um, I don't see much of essential stuff here about hitting some shipyard ship, stuff like that. Uh, we don't actually really get, I got a feeling that we don't actually get the truth about what goes on with in Ukraine. I don't see really the news that would indicate me clearly about what goes on. And I do have advanced knowledge about this stuff and have a great difficulty understanding issues uh, which they are projecting. You know, Zelensky claims here he's complaining about, and he was complaining to me about during MK Ultra, Israel Gaza conflict taking all attention away from uh, conflict in Ukraine, in Ukraine. And I see it more or less, they are repeating this news already for days now that Israel Gaza conflict is taking attention away from Ukraine. This is true, but not, not really. It's not really the truth. The world did not forget about Ukraine. The world knows where the real war is. The world knows what to expect from Gaza but does not know what to expect from the big world that is deciding about the security of entire Europe. That's war between Russia, actually it's a war against the Russian invasion. So when Zelensky claims what you see right there, that Israeli Gaza conflict is taking all attention away from Ukraine, and on the other hand, is reporting here how the air defense is being destroyed, the Russian air defense is down. Uh, he is giving me very, very false information. I don't know how much the Russian air defense is down. Do you have any data that you can support this? That you can give any? That you can? That you can support your claims? Well, I mean, yes, but how much of this air defense is down? How much is it? I mean, is it is it down as much as, as you would, or I should say Vladimir Putin would fear? Uh, is coming next for him? Or is it just certain systems that were down, basically? Where exactly are we at? I haven't seen exactly that I would see some kind of major breakthrough but the truth however also is that i'm not there and i don't blame you for not reporting what goes on on the front line to the media either if you shouldn't you really, really shouldn't if you ask me you shouldn't you should just do what's right to do because i think that's about your strongest weapon that you have um acting according to your conscience as long as it works you can you can't go wrong with that now, this here is a really bad news. And, you know, this doesn't go along with 
the news that you know the battery is the Russian air defense is down and so on uh, because it's really really conflicting like what the fuck are you gonna do with the destroy the Russian air defense if you don't even have shells like ammunition that you urgently need to even maintain what I see more and more coming attacks from the Russian side on Ukraine again it's again fortifying Vladimir Putin claimed that if when the winter comes now this winter that he would quadruple assaults uh, drone assaults shelling on Ukrainian, on Ukrainian troops a real effing madness which however was responded during MK Ultra with something else for which also I'm not seeing how that will come now Putin did sign at end of the treaty in respect to nuclear arsenal experimentation uh, but when I look at all this picture all this stuff here I don't actually see anything that would suggest me clear outcome in how to see the pictures in which direction the whole thing is moving it the only thing I can say is that both sides hopefully I'm not saying this because I see Ukrainian uh, Zelensky as a traitor or something like that I don't see him I, th I think she is doing a good job and I would just hope so that he's doing a good job but on the other hand I have to say you know when you say that air defenses are down and you're actually suffering such a severe lack of ammunition uh, and you're saying that the world is shifting like you're repeating the news why the fuck do you repeat the news that the world is shifting attention to Gaza and Israel I mean this is where I am experiencing trouble this is where I'm experiencing trouble because it's a lot of conflicting news and when you say you, you're trying to like you know it's not necessary the war in Gaza in uh, Israel only took place for the sake of Putin it, it could be also that the war in Gaza in Israel took place also for the sake of those within Ukrainian military personnel who are looking their way out so they can say oh well you know it was all the attention that's how we lost the war all attention was into Gaza and Israel and so on you know it could be more than it's just like straight for the Putin it could be also for the ranks within the Ukrainian military leadership that are taking advantage uh, preparing why the fuck do you repeat this news that all the eyes are you know that the world took eyes away from Ukraine and this and that you know don't worry about that stuff but the world needs to know what's happening on a front line and with what Ukraine military is lagging behind as far as ammunition that kind of stuff that's the stuff you need to know you need to update the picture you need to tell you need to appear on a screen on a TV in a media uh, talking about what exactly the shortages are where do you need what do you need how do you advance you need to demonstrate how the Ukraine is suffering because of lack of whatever this is the stuff exactly I'm gonna say I don't see so you know I don't like this news here about this stuff here about that all the ice are in Gaza in Israel we have gone through this stuff already we understand this the world understands we get it we get it what we need to what we need is not excuse for losing the war and I'm not saying that you're losing the war but we really need to know what exactly is behind this destroyed Russian defenses air defenses 
That's basically what we need to know. We need to know where to go from. Where do we go from here? That is basically of the world's interest. And based on what I see here, the picture is freaking blur. Uh, I see a lot of media reporting negative news on Ukrainian troops in Ukraine, that Ukrainian troops are exhausted, they're overworked, and so on. So I'm going to ask you, Zelensky, why the fuck are they overworked? Why are they exhausted? Is it like excuse for such a stuff? There is none. The Ukrainian troops that are exposed to lengthy battlefield, frontline battlefield, should be replaced on every 14 days. You should have a fresh people replacing them. Pulling them out, getting them in the rear, throwing sneakers on their feet and make them walk every fucking day 20 miles on their feet. Sleep, walk, sleep, walk, sleep, walk, sleep, walk. And return them back, whatever, after 14 days. Get the thorough report from the troops before them so they can take it from there to see what to expect. They, too, maybe even stay next to them and release them so they can go and do their exercise and return back and so on. Seeing the troops that are exhausted means they have a lack of physical exercise, lack of psychological release from this stress, from this option. We don't see here so much of the, uh, you know, face-to-face -face combat, like one-on-one uh, -on -one combat or something like this. What we see mostly here is shelling, you know, and even if you would have people inside of the ditches uh, watching on the side, you, you, those people need to get out of those ditches and they need to go out and walk and exercise, and eat good, eat, eat good and exercise and, and exercise and exercise and exercise so that brain can be full of oxygen when they return back, so they can, they, can, they can maximum still exercise inside of those ditches, keep the top condition, physical condition, uh, prepared all the time for the enemy, causing enemy, you know, harm, and have, you know, maybe even the third uh, round, just like you work in, the, in a factory, which is open 24 hours, you know, you have three shifts, basically. Third shift, basically, you release them, replace them, and so on. This is basically how the engine, the military engine, functions on a war field like this. You do have to adjust your engine. You should already have adjust one to the conditions so the people don't rot over there, so the people don't get killed. They don't rust. You know, they don't get exhausted. I don't know. I haven't seen this kind of stuff. Maybe this kind of stuff goes on. But I haven't seen one. I see Russians pounding heavily civilian targets. And uh, basically, I don't see anybody that will come out and stress these issues to international society. Uh, you know, those are the issues that needs to be done. That's, it's the kind of stuff that needs to be, that, that it's, it's war on civilians more so than it's war on uh, troops. And the troops are lacking ammunition to even contain uh, Russians from advancing toward Ukraine. This isn't about assault anymore. This isn't about attack. Uh, I heard in Avdivka, uh, Russians are, are pounding Ukrainian troops from all sides. It's not a good stuff that's happening. So... Now, this is nice that, that you do attack here and there and so on, but it, it tells little, way too little about really what's going on. And so, you know, to the Ukrainian analysts and people that watch this stuff, maybe, uh, maybe there's a lot of stuff that we don't know goes on and should. Maybe we should. I'm not saying that... that uh, that we have to, because I don't know, there is like military strategy, uh, a rather 
is the strategy. You wouldn't know what goes on. The, the last, the less, sometimes, yeah, the less the public knows what goes on, the better. But I'm not really impressed with this. You know, Putin's making new assaults on Ukraine, and he's more and more heavily pounding Ukraine with uh, drones and so on. It's, it's more and more and more attacks. Some are even it's suggesting they're more and more sophisticated more and more difficult to catch with less and less choice to make. So I don't know what to make out of this stuff, but it sure does not look good. You know, what do we know about this funding of Ukraine and stuff like this, you know? You know. You know, from the Lion Hills Ukrainian Excellent Progress here, Fantastic. But I hear more and more uh, agencies are suggesting that Ukraine is willing to negotiate peace. I don't think that peace should be negotiated till every millimeter of the Ukrainian land, territory, its return under the wings of Ukrainian military. Till Ukraine takes complete possession of it, there should not be any kind of negotiations from my point of view, because, because guess why? Guess why? It's not about negotiations. Ukraine running out of troops. See, this, this is the stuff that actually worries me. This is the stuff that actually worries me. So I want to know about this war that's taking all the ice away from Ukraine. Talking about the Gaza and Israel. What else the hell do we need to know about this war? Because it's, I got a feeling that there is a lot, a lot of stuff that we don't know that's happening in Ukraine. And it's some other war that's being used to cover up. So these are the issues I would stress to you today about this war in Ukraine, uh, to the Ukrainian strategists, to the generals, to the people that watch this closely, to please ask yourself what's going on, what's, what, what do you observe, what the situation is, pay attention to it, uh, and you know, you got to find a way to give the feedback to the public, or in other words, you're misleading public. I don't know much about these deals. I don't know. I'm just doing my best to open eyes to the people, to the public. Uh, I don't know what soldiers in Ukraine on a front line, what exactly do they see, what's happening. But, uh, you know, I would hope that West would move but and do what it takes to secure European security. I'm going to even say future, because if Ukraine is not going to get its territory back, I can guarantee you, I guarantee you this, and it doesn't matter where you are, I guarantee you, whether you're a Polak or you're a Romanian or you're a Bulgarian or Hungarian, wherever the hell you are, not only you're going to have trouble with a Ukraine that's going to be ripped apart, demolished, exhausted. You're definitely going to lose partner, somebody that should be your biggest partner anyway. Uh, Security-wise, definitely. Uh, but it goes to Italy, it goes to Germany, it goes to France, Spain, Britain, Scandinavia. Uh, you are going to face with the total demoralization of the rest of the Ukraine. And consequently, with ability that Putin is going to, if it would come, that he would get all this territory, uh, you are going to face through the demoralization process, through the systematic fall of entire Ukrainian state, which is going to decay 
through the chaos, through the moralization process into a new part of Russia. That's exactly what Putin did not play only on Crimea, Donetsk, I should say, eastern part of Ukraine. He wanted the whole thing. You already know this stuff. So unless you want Russia, one Ukraine closer to your doorsteps, and by the way, you're making an extremely poor impression on other Eastern Europeans. I, I always stress to you, Ish, is that people that watch this stuff, they actually really, really express doubts in you, whether it's even worth it to be in this kind of circle because of such a lack of support that you expressed for Ukraine. And I don't really know what went on, what goes on, what's going to come out of it, but it was a lot of Eastern European politicians that were shaken with the lack of response that the West gave to Ukraine for coming war uh, invasion on Ukraine. It's already stuff that it came in the heads of the Polish politician, Czech, Slovak politician, Romanian politician, other politicians. They started to wonder about completely other options that exist out there. They started to wonder, in other words, about the European Union, where this whole thing is taking to. You're actually, you're actually facing in Berlin, in Paris, in Rome, in London, Stockholm, whatever, Brussels, you're actually facing bigger crisis than what you suppose you are. The United States of America is a main supporter, main supplier to, of weaponry to, to Ukraine. Well, maybe you instead should be the one. Donald Trump made point when he said he wouldn't give you he wouldn't help you if you wouldn't pay your dues to NATO. He was right. He was absolutely right about it. There were NATO members that paid way less and got a lot and got away with it for so many years, decades, because of others, bigger. I think it's time to change this stuff. I think that... Uh, if you want to invest in something, in some kind of partnership, in some kind of security, all you have to think, all you have to recall, those of you that remember me, about how bloody it was to get out of the Soviet Union, is exactly basically what I say. You're going to have to invest something. You can't be just doing stuff like this uh, basically just taking. You have to invest something into it so you can get something out of it. Otherwise, you're going to be just one step closer to Russia. That's all that's going to be. And you're going to be step closer to Russia for the cost of Ukrainian state. I'm going to say heavily crippled state with deeply agitated Ukrainian people that are going to side with the Russians for the cost of genocide because of bitterness against you. <laughs> you are making the history right now, so you better make positive for yourself, for everybody. I don't know anything about these planes, about this, this F-16 fighter jets that never arrived to, to Ukraine, we still haven't seen them. Uh, quite frankly, I don't think they're going to make any, any difference at all. It's like Vladimir Putin already stated. They aren't going to make any difference. That shit is not going to make absolutely any difference. I'm skeptical about that, about those 30, 40 planes that are going to come to Ukraine. I don't think it's going to be a lot of difference. Russians have the ways to get the planes down. They did shot a lot of fighter jets recently from Ukraine. Ukraine suffered loss of fighter jets. They are well prepared, they're well armed. Uh, it's great 
as Zelensky stated, that the air defense uh, is, it would be helpful to have those, those fighter jets, in other words, but, you know, I'm very skeptical about this stuff. I think that, uh, I think that Ukrainian pilots should have been already long time ago when it comes to F-16, F-15 training, that it's been way, way, way overdue. I don't understand the reason why that would be the case. I'm going to say to you, Zelensky, that you should have purchased F-16 on your own. You know, uh, you as a Ukrainian immediately should have purchased F-16 because what are you going to do with a F with a MiG-29? You know, NATO doesn't have MiG-29. They don't have a Sukhoi. They don't have a Sukhoi fighter jets. They don't have mix. You should just buy one or two, maybe, and train Ukrainian pilots, drill them uh, on this NATO fighter jets. You, you should just get them from Poland. You should just get them from somebody. Uh, I'm not saying that you should buy the whole fleet, but, you know, it wouldn't hurt to have two pieces and drain, train, drill them your pilots on them, because for fuck's sake, you're not going to get assistance in form of NICs and Sukhois from the United States. And or should create some kind of partnership through Poland, train them with the Polish troops some way, somehow. I'm actually really, really surprised that it was so unprepared when it comes to... You all know about all this stuff that more or less, it's going to, how this thing is going to develop. But I don't see that, that uh, your actions would coordinate, correspond with the news that you knew about is going to be that, that you, 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 I'm not going to say advise me, but you brainwash me with what's going to be next and so on and so forth. But there's very little out of that stuff. I would like to see some more coordinated, more organized, more effective defense for the troops so they can do their job. This is another thing. How the hell are you going to do the job if you are under a constant threat? I mean, if you're on the front line, you have to be somewhere. You got to be secure. You got to have some peace of mind, some, something. They will suggest that you're safe from immediate attack and so on. Very, very, very strange. Very, very strange news from 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 uh, Ukraine. Uh, I I really don't know what's going on with this stuff here. I don't understand. I don't I don't get this 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 stuff here. Yeah, this is cool. The, the Middle East is taking focus from Ukraine. Yeah, that, that is true. That, that, that stuff's true. But, you know, what, you, what Ukraine needs is the stuff that I stated. That, that you need to, you know, unless you're doing so good, unless you're really, really good at unless right now, Zelensky, I'm talking to you, unless you have taken down like a major, major, you caused like, you inflicted like a major, major catastrophe to the Russian troops. And you're causing something really, really strategic, strategically important that's going to play a crucial role in the near future. Unless, unless you're doing this, you're a complete fuck up. And the troops up front, the people that are up front need to pay attention to this. If that stuff is not happening, then Zelensky is totally, totally faking it. That's the stuff that Ukrainian military, uh, the people that are on the front lines need to pay very, very close attention to. I don't know what that means, this news that I read. I'm completely confused with this. Don't know what to think about any of it. Don't know what to make out of this stuff. European Union door for Ukraine. You know, who cares about European Union right now? You know. It's like negotiations with the Russia, you know, what, what, uh, 
you know, what's really, really important is something else, you know. I don't see the news I would hope for, you know, simple as this. I don't, I don't see the news that, that I would hope for. I haven't seen this. I did discuss this issue already. Uh, I don't want this kind of news. You understand? I don't want this kind of news to become a news. I don't want this to turn into a news. Next to a few other losers that launched uh, some kind of doubts, you know, uh, into whether it's worth it to defend their doorsteps or not. I, I don't... Uh, I don't go for it. Maybe this is also a strategy. I was also told about some other issues, but you know, uh, how can I say? Um, leaving a politicians like this, not touching them, uh, leaves the door open upon their departure, because this is what I'm sure they plan on, uh, for somebody with whom I'm going to address as whomever. Because whomever is going to come, uh, whomever is going to come, even in Italy, in Italy, when it comes to the Italy, most of the Italians are really good people. Most of the Italians side with the people of Ukraine. Most of the Italians are staunch supporters of people of Ukraine. I'm going to tell you this. Most of them are good people. And you know what the biggest problem when it comes to Italy is? It's also for Italian people, it's just that little fraction of the people is the problem is that that little fraction of the people makes all the fucking decisions that matter. And so what, whoever is going to come and replace, if that person, whoever is going to come and replace is not going to have something, you know, that's why I, I try, you know, I try. That's why I did this. That's why I, I made... I dedicated her post. Whoever is going to come and replace, if it's not going to have, if it's not going to have something like this, and more than this, that he's going to be capable, that he's going to stand up and uh, voice his concerns about it, you know? Uh, if if, it, if, if he's not going to have, then the voice of the people is not going to make any difference. His voice, not the voice of the people, is going to make any difference. That's why, it's, for me, it's important that the politicians are disregarded for their gestures, uh, like side gestures, and what is going to be used a certain thing for. And I believe they should be confronted with what clearly majority of the people uh, pursue, views us based on their actions. Now, that's why it's so important to, to, to eliminate the politicians that are immediately, that are not basically doing... Uh, providing the expectations of what their duties, what they were assigned to, to perform according to their duties. I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe she has some, some other, uh, maybe she has some other plans behind all this stuff. I do not know, but I know one thing. I can afford that whoever comes to replace her uh, or for the average viewer to not notice the stuff that I know, uh, and I hope other people feel the same, that 
the politicians like this must, must be immediately tackled. They must be immediately uh, rebuked. They must, they must be immediately, they must be immediately exposed as politicians that are just, uh, you know, they have on their mind special interests that do not represent the needs of the people. So, more power to you. I find it strange that we still don't have what it takes already and that Ukrainian troops don't even have the fucking ammunition. That I don't know. How do you fight an enemy like this without ammunition even? I truly do not understand any of this. This is poor. Very, very poor. Poor performance. I just don't know on who, who is doing it. Definitely, whoever is doing it, Ukrainian side cannot afford itself to let it go. You cannot afford any of it. You have to keep going, just like you work on the front line, just like you fight on the front line. You have to continue to fight for your soldiers also, never to get tired, always to be in a good shape, on a top shape, so they can do their top missions, missions of a lifetime. Ukrainian troops defend, you know, um, Russian attacks force evacuation of more children. So the people are more evacuating. And, you know, we have here issues such as uh, discussion with Ukraine, possible peace talk with uh, Russia and so on. Uh, you know, this isn't about war in Gaza, Israel. I got a shit feeling that the one that talks a lot about Ukraine losing attention is not doing the job. But then again, as I stated, I do not know the soldiers on the front line, however, do. The people that see what goes on do. And uh, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you, the people on the front line, should keep connected with one another, with your media and so on. And uh, I don't know. You got to really know what you're doing in this stuff. I, I really, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know anymore how to view this as, yeah? This here, this is certainly not a good news, but it could be a way out. This is certainly not a good news, but it could be the beginning of the real end, very fast end. This stuff here, that you see here, this kind of stuff here, 
It was another scenario. It was used to scare Monger during MK Ultra. And he goes it line in line with all this news, with negotiations, and then all that kind of Maloney news and so on. You know? Maloney baloney. So I don't like to know what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, I'm not going to say anything about Zelensky. I will not say because, you know, there was a lot of mystery, a lot of stuff that was involved in MK Ultra. You must have understood the tone, the language I've spoken to you during this video that I wondered at the beginning of the video about the certain issues that are implicated and they were trying to play me with during MK Ultra. They, they gave all kinds of impressions about all this stuff. And frankly, I really don't know. The only thing I know is that the stuff that I, that I spoke to you about, it would be good if the people, this on the front line, Ukrainian soldiers would coordinate news with rear, with the people, with their media, with their people, uh, and so they, that they would know from all directions, from all the sides, about how this on a picture, where this with Zelensky, where do we fit here, what is happening here with the West, how do they transition support for Ukraine and so on. This is the stuff. This is the stuff that um, I think it's crucial at this point in time. It uh, it does not do. Um, you, know, you guys in Ukraine that do media and you do have a contact with uh, people also from front lines, certain guys, you do. Uh, you should uh, somehow also coordinate uh, with one it, with the one each other. You should exchange your views and compare this to what you see on. You know, I, I don't know. You know, I just hope the Ukrainian leadership is Ukrainian. But because of the stuff I have gone through, uh, this scene, these people meeting together, I don't know. I don't want to be a part of something that is called a loser. I don't accept being loser. If you're going to accept being loser, you're going to be loser on your own. Whoever is going to accept, always is going to accept this because you want it this way. I never am. I never will be. That's all I got to say. I don't know what else I would add to this video. Strange stuff is happening. Strange stuff is happening. 